Uh, we got classes all around in the, the building right now, but we're in our adult class, and we've got a special speaker today that's going to be ministering to you, Brother Irvin, Brother Ron Irvin, and we're thankful for that. Why don't we just stand? Let's just lift our hands and worship as he comes and invite the presence of the Lord to anoint him as he teaches the word. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Burks, for confidence and prayer, and the church, thank you for the invitation, amen. Ron Irvin, me and my wife live Holly Springs, east of Jasper, amen. There's a church in Holly Springs, uh, several of us live out there, and we still speak in tongues out there. The Holy Ghost still moves. We baptize in Jesus' name in Holly Springs. Amen. So whatever that is means for you, amen. I want us to pray before we read today. Uh, I understand today is the president's birthday. I believe he's 80 years old. And the Bible instructs me to pray for him. And uh, the bear is poised, Brother Burke, to head south toward Israel. That's Russia. And I don't want that to happen in my lifetime. I don't want that to happen. And we can hinder that through prayer. Amen. I, I like for us to do that and uh, ask God to have mercy upon. I have some friends in the Ukraine. I have some personal friends there. And uh, I don't know if they're alive or not. And uh, I'm just that kind of guy. So I want us to pray, if you will. Anyone else have something like that you would like to pray for amen let's pray together amen lord jesus help us help our president our government our military lord israel surround her with peace today lord rebuke the wicked oh god hold back the evil today lord jesus help us reach out in faith today and believe in jesus name we pray amen in jesus name we pray Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated today. Thank you so much. I want us to go. You don't have to stand unless you just have to. I'm going to uh, go to the book of Luke chapter 23 first, and I'll read a text a little later. But in Luke chapter 23 in the New Testament, we find Jesus before the authorities of his day. Jesus is accused by Jewish officials of sedition before Governor Pilate. Pilate questions Jesus and finds him innocent. And he tries to release him three times. He knows the man's innocent. But the Jewish officials and the mob demand that Jesus be crucified. And to keep favor, you ever heard of a political correctness? No. To keep favor and to quiet the riots that were in the street, Pilate releases Jesus to the mob, yeah. turns him loose, kind of like what's going on in our country right now, to be crucified on Calvary or Golgotha. Three days later, the women that had followed Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem they bring some spices to anoint his body with. He had not been prepared for the grave yet, and they wanted, to, by Jewish custom, to prepare his body for that burial. They find the tomb empty and report this to his 11 disciples back at Jerusalem. Jesus appears to two disciples on a road to Emmaus and opens the scriptures to their understanding. They report to the 11 disciples at Jerusalem that they had just seen Jesus who had just been crucified. And there was doubt in the atmosphere. Suddenly, Jesus appears to all that are present there at Jerusalem in that place. He dines with them. He eats with them and opens the scriptures to their understanding. He then says this to the disciples. 
Luke chapter 24 and verse 46, Jesus says this, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And he said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry you in the city to, of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Amen. Verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Today's lesson, this is teaching, is on R and R. Anybody ever been on R and R? That's a famous, popular word where I used to work, construction or overseas. That usually means rest and recuperation. Rest and relaxation. Amen. To working people, it means vacation. Today, R&R &R means repentance and remission of sin. Amen. You ever had a definition of sin? Sin is the culprit, the offense. Sin, according to the Greek. Now, we're going to go somewhere. Just hold on. Sin, according to the Greek, means to miss the mark. An offense to God. Amen. Romans 6.23 declares that the wages, the wages of sin, what you work for, pertaining to sin, is death. You sin to die. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin. Would you like to name a few? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, if you please. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? In this culture we live in, people are inquisitive, they're educated, knowledge it has increased. Amen. And people will ask you, well, what, what is sin? That, that's an un unpopular word. You don't hear much about, quote, sin. That's right. If you watch on your tablet or your TV or whatever, whatever the news you're watching, they don't just say, well, this sin is being, you know, perpetrated over here. They're sinning in Seattle. They're sinning in Houston. They're sinning in Jasper. That's not the way they'll approach it. It's all about the civil right now and what your personal feeling is about it. But look at this. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, he said, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate, I dare you go home and study that one. It'll be an eye opener. Jehovah, the almighty God that created the heavens and the earth, spoke this and had it written for our admonition yes. to listen to right. and to prepare ourselves right. so we can be equipped and not sin nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Amen. All of these, nor thieves, nor covetous, 
I don't see, there's Sister Allison and Brother Allison. Did he make it today? Okay. He's not here, but I, when I first met him, he drove up in a, an older model Chevrolet fleet side pickup. And later I told his wife, I said, your husband made me sin, <laughs> or almost. And she said, you know, it shocked her. Well, Brother Irvin, what happened? I said, well, he, I want that truck he's got. <laughs> And he had already donated it to uh, uh, the work of the Lord somewhere. And uh, my mama used, used that term, Brother Burks, when Daddy would frustrate her. She said, you make me sin. And that's biblical. I can cause you to sin by what I wear or by how I look. Oh, he's so fine. Oh, she looked so, did you see her? She looked good. My wife corrects that immediately. And uh, the second look, Brother Royer, is on me. Amen. And that's not the message today, but you see what I'm talking about. The conclusive fact, the conclusive fact is sin separates me from Jesus Christ. My practice, what I love, what I like to do, may be contrary to Jesus Christ. Amen. It could be religious and contrary. I remember I pastored in another part of the United States, and I had a, a man there converted in a church from the city close to New Orleans. And uh, he told me that his family was absent that day because they had a religious service and they were going to burn a candle for some lost loved ones and I said what are you talking about he said well supposedly they're in purgatory and we're gonna burn this candle and I said well tell me a little bit more about it he said well it it's a twenty thousand dollar candle and it'll uh, expedite the process and I said really and he really they really believed that and uh, it stirred me to preach the message of Jesus Christ even more so because of people like that that are dedicated. Amen. I was in Portland, Texas uh, about six weeks ago, and I preached there in a UPC church there where my son lives. And there was a, quote, Catholic man there in that service. And he literally almost ran to the altar as I preached and uh, it would baffle me, but it shouldn't have. And later he told me in tears, he said, Brother Irvin, God sent you here to speak to me. It, I had never received that like I should have. It wasn't my personality. It was the gospel. Just a simple Acts 238 message. And, he, and the man is still attending that church. He just needs to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. The cure or the antidote for sin is repentance and the new birth experience. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10, For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world works death. Godly sorrow, in that respect, we're not talking about remorse or just feeling bad about something or what I'm doing you know that seems to be so common now people uh, you know at the end of the, of the emotional service there are great orators and great music now in our churches and people come to the altar and they get a buzz and they feel kind of bad about what they did yesterday or are going to do today or what they're involved in right now and they get a little bit of relief. Their guilt is kindly relieved, and uh, they feel good, and they think that's salvation, but it's not. It's not a pity party, and I, I, I prayed around a lot of pity parties in the altar, but it's a godly sorrow, a brokenness. Psalms 51 and verse 17 speaks of the sacrifices of God or a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Brokenness. Amen. I want to go back here to 1 Corinthians 6 and 
verse 19, if you have it. Can you bring that back up? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. It says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple? Do what? Your body is the temple. God gave me that revelation 50 years ago when I received the Holy Ghost. I understood that night that I had been actually destroying my body, the temple of God. And I w it scared the daylights out of me to the point where I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I had made an offense to God. My sin was an offense to God. Everything I love to do, everything I like to do, I like my beer. I like a little bit of wine every now and then. I like my biker. That's tobacco. I liked it. All phases of it. Cigars, cigarettes, I dip snuff and I chewed. I liked that stuff. What I didn't understand was I was in bondage to it. I started when I was six years old because Back in those days, you'd walk a mile for a camel. Marlboro Man wasn't even in existence. Yes, sir. Paul Mall and all the cool filters. and I love that stuff. Yes, sir. And it had me captive. But I learned that my body was a temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have are God. And he said, you are not your own. Amen. Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Matthew 5 and 6 relates this. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yeah. And that brings us to this right here today. This R&R &R is what I entitled this message today. Just simply... R and R, repentance and remission of sin. Taking some R and R today. Yep. Amen. I have a, a little object here. A picture's worth 10,000 words. Maybe this will help someone. I remember, and I've seen people come down and negotiate with God. I've seen them come down and argue with God. And I've seen them fuss at God and blame God and uh, I probably bordered on that at times I've complained a little bit to God before and I've had some spankings from the Lord and they hurt <laughs> he can make you cry and he will to save your soul you mean God the God of love this is all about love but when I came to church and I heard the gospel and I heard the message of repentance, amen. And I understood what sin was all about. And I came to that altar. I brought my sin, amen. It was a lot more than this. But I've seen people can't come with their little handful or handkerchief full of, of little things, you know, that, that uh, really they could dispose of, but they would not turn loose of the real problem whatever it was it could be pride and the way I look amen it could be my machoism you know yeah. I'm 10 foot tall and bullet bulletproof yeah. I found myself on my face in the dirt I remember one time uh, 50 years ago 52 years ago I woke up in the piney woods brother Kelly leaned up against a pine tree just before daylight, daylight, and I had no idea how I got there or what had happened to me. Amen. And that's a type of sin. I had, uh, I had stretched that sin's ability to the limit. I was at a point of, I guess, when you, when you pass out from alcohol, you're as close to death as you can get, according to the doctors. You're just right at the point of death. And there I lay in the woods, you know, with my sinful condition. Amen. There I was. And I, I came to that Pentecostal church, and I drugged that bag of sinful things to that altar. And what I'm trying to say here today is, is this. 
Don't wrangle. Don't argue with God. Bring it all. Bring everything with you. Everything that you even suspicion that it's an offense. Bring it. Let God expose it. I lied. I told untruths. I stole a few things in my life. I did. I mistreated people. I had a problem with hate. When I left Vietnam, I had burrs under my saddle for the government. I really didn't care. I did not care anymore. I had a, a death wish. I found out years later. A psychologist told me, you have a, a death wish, a deep set grievance, and it can get you in trouble. And I would have problems with rage. You know, I still have a trinkle of that from the past. Amen. And, and uh, I, you, you've heard me say it, but especially in November, I was sent off to war in uh, 1969. And, and every time, this time of year, I go into a depression. And uh, yeah, I've been forgiven. It's under the blood, but I still have a memory, amen, of those things. And sometimes, well, every year I'll go through a depression. My wife recognizes that, and she knows how to deal with it. I'm easy to set off during that time. Road rage. I'm guilty of it. I told her recently, I said, if you wasn't in this truck, I'd be killed in the next few minutes. Because I'd talk to that guy right there. Well, that's kind of dumb. I know some of you are so, you know, you just sparkle out there. I'm so different than most of you because I make mistakes. Amen. I even trespass sometimes. I've had punks walk up to me this tall, even females. And I'd rearrange your jaw if I could have. But you see, I have a, a, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And he rises up to that occasion, Brother Rowyer. I'm so thankful that I don't have to hurt anybody anymore. Brother Paul, you were a tough hicker nut. Do you remember where he brought you from? Did nobody wrangle and tangle with you? But they came and saw a new creature later. Brother Elton, you're the same way. I know some of you people. Some of you I don't. But some of us have history. Yeah. Amen. I was talking to the grandchildren. I got some attention now, but see, I'm, I'm going back, and I know that that can be dangerous. But I want you to see where I came from and where Jesus Christ brought me from and what he did for me and others. I was telling our grandsons, you have to be careful, those grandchildren. At my house out on the farm, I was telling them how when I was a young man, me and my wife would be at the swimming hole. And I said, I'd throw her over my shoulder and I'd run down the sandbar and we'd just, I'd run out into the creek with her or the bar pits with my wife, just carry her and run down there and splash into the water. Now, you, you want the rest of the story, don't you? <laughs> and I said, Nanu, Sister Irving, could do the same thing for me. That's how little I was. And Preston, you know, all three of those boys have great minds. And they listened and they thought. And Preston said, Pop, could you do that when you was 85 years old? <laughs> That's what he thinks. They think I'm 100 years old. They think I grew up with Moses. They do. They, That's actually a truth. And I had to explain it to them. Grayson, it's 11 years old now. He said I was old as dirt. <laughs> and they come up with some questions. And I leave most of it to their parents. Amen. <laughs> it's good to see Brittany here, Sister Brittany. I've known her all of her life. Amen. It's good to see her here today. Part of the family. But, oh God. R&R. &R, Repentance and remission of sin. Yes, sir. Was it a garbage bag? 
My wife said, what are you going to do with that today? And I said, that's sin. <laughs> or was it a tote sack, Brother Morgan? Me and you both, I believe you had two tote sacks. Because I know where you came from. You was a worldly musician, and that's enough. You played the honky-tonks. Listen, let me, let me show how ele elementary this is, and it might help some of you. You remember over where the old Club 87 was? It's still there? Yeah. When I go to Orange, Texas, if I do, I drive 87 south. When we pass, I never look down that road, that little dirt road that goes in there. It's probably paved now. I refuse to look because that's where I hung out on weekends. And there's too much there for me to remember. It hurts. And I don't, I don't want to think about it. And that's where, on my oldest brother's wedding night, a man put a 22 revolver between my eyes and pulled the trigger. And the pistol went off and it burned my hand. But I lived. And not long after that, you know, not long after that, well, the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost. God got my attention. So many things happened there, down that little old lonely dirt road. Other places, you know, we go, and I just, I don't want to talk about it. I, I talked to someone this morning about their associates and their, the crowd they run with, their friends. And one person told me this morning and said, you know, I've had to disassociate. I've had to move away from my old crowd. Let me tell you what, you better... Because you'll get hurt. I did. I had to learn the hard way. I had a good pastor. Amen. And he talked. But you know, I just had to I just had to go and find out, you know, some you know, some children are like that, and that's what I was, a baby in Christ. And I had to learn the hard way, and the Lord had to correct me. Amen. To learn how to live right and not live in sin and offense. The scripture teaches that there, when you repent and you're baptized in Jesus' name in Acts 2.38, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the born-again experience. Yes. Repentance and remission of sin. Remission is more than just pardon. Remission is God can't remember it anymore. It's seven and a half miles beneath the ocean in one place in scripture it speaks of as far as the east is from the west he cast it away from it i remember one pastor told me he prayed one day and he he had a memory and he was he was having a pity party about it and said the holy spirit spoke to him and said what are you talking about and he said well lord you know what i did he said no i don't I don't. It's under the blood. I can't remember that. Why are you dragging it back up? Your friends are the ones that will drag that junk back into your life. I feel this so strong. This is elementary today. I feel this so strong right now. Your crowd is what will, is an offense to Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember Brother Burke's you were a roaring evangelist, you and Sister Burks, during that time. And you helped me a whole lot. Amen. In counsel. But I remember two times specifically. Back in those days, we had dinners on the ground and big parties, you know, when you had your liquor and your wine. And there was an old saying back then if you want to see a fight, go to the urban reunion. The girls will fight. You ever seen a good girl fight? I have. My wife was militant in high school. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, I can't believe so many of you did not live in sin like I lived in and participated in, in high school and watered in sin. But... When we were saved, me and my wife, you know, God cleaned us up, began cleaning our spirit and, and the way we looked and everything. Well, two different individuals, family members came and told me and said, 
Ronnie, uh, we, we kindly wish that you wouldn't come to the family reunions, you and your, your family, because you just, you quench, you quench the joy, you quench the way we feel when y'all drive up. We can't joke and drink and fight and curse and do all of that stuff anymore. When, you, when you're present, it contaminates, you know, it defi just like a, one of them said, it's, it's just like a wet blanket when y'all come. Throw it over all the fun. Well, I didn't know how to respond. I just said, well, we're not going to stop coming. And, you know, finally, those people were saved. And they had a testimony. Right. We kept coming, and we didn't change, and we did not compromise the truth. One, uh, and she was a friend when she died, an elderly lady. She requested that behind my back, she said, don't let him pray over the food. And you know me, I don't pray very long. Like Grayson told me, grandson, not long ago, we asked him to pray over the food one Sunday. He said, I prayed enough today, somebody else pray. <laughs> so, that's what he said. When Sister Burke's here, my youngest daughter, the pastor's wife, was probably five years old, we were in Quarrow, Texas somewhere, and we, were, we always ate together at lunch or at dinner, midday meal, and it was her turn to pray, and I said, Laura Lee, you pray. We bowed our heads, and nothing was said, and I, I kindly looked up, and everybody else had their head raised, and I said, Laura Lee, I didn't hear you pray. She said, I was not talking to you, Daddy. <laughs> I couldn't say anything. She had prayed in Jesus' name. But this senior lady sent word, said, he will pray in the name of Jesus, not the titles. Oh, God. If she had, I hope she did, but if she could have met him the way I did... Amen. April the 17th, 1974. And uh, Sister Burks, if she could have met him. When I was laying in that floor at that old Bonware church, and your mother was sitting on the floor beside me, and your brother had hold of me, and the tears were swimming down my face, and they said, Ronnie, You've done everything we've asked you to do, but this one thing, just lift your eyes and your hands to Jesus and say Jesus. And man, I started that process, and I, mem I remember getting halfway up, and when I came to, it was 45 minutes later. I was speaking in Mongolian, Japanese, or something, and I had made my way to the back of the church, and I was speaking in an unknown language, to my family members that were there, about 12 or 15 of my family members. And some of them were just laughing because they knew what was going on with me. They had had it before and I didn't know it. But if those people that were so critical could have met Jesus Christ in an altar of repentance and been buried in the name of Jesus for remission of their sin, amen. They would pray in Jesus' name out loud. Amen. I remember there was an old, old saying back when I was a young man. I, Brother Sanders, Brother Billy Frank, Sister Kathy is here. Larry and Lee and my brother-in-law and his wife are here. And there was an old saying. My, my mama would even use the old saying. Daddy would rile her up, you know, that aggravate her yesterday my wife said can't you find anything to do outside <laughs> and I did <laughs> and uh, you learn <laughs> Brother Burke's our pastor our young pastor teaches that he's learned already <laughs> go find something to do amen come back an hour later, everything's lovely. 
Mama would say, I forgive you, but I won't forget it. Don't raise your hand how many here have said that recently. I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget it. Amen. Jesus Christ is not that kind of Savior. Amen. You can offend him later, but we have an advocate. Amen. You can offend him later, but come right back to that same old altar. Sometimes people wonder, you know, Brother Irvin, you seem to just, uh, just like a, a wren or a sparrow to its nest. I got a, a robin, a little robin box. Uh, no, it's a bluebird, bluebird box next to my wife's uh, window where she sits and reads her Bible in the mornings. And I, got, I built her a rose garden there and there's a blue, bluebird box. And those bluebirds yesterday were just back and forth checking out that box. And they, I've, heard, I've had people here say, Brother Irvin, you hang out here. I sit there for a reason. I hang out here because this is where I met him. Yeah. This is where I brought the frustration. This is where I brought the guilt. This is where I brought the hate. This is where I brought all that was listed in the Corinthian letter, the lying and the stealing. I brought it to an altar at a Pentecostal church and he spoke and he forgave me and he forgot it and they buried me in water in the name of Jesus and when you're buried or when you repent that's death death, burial, resurrection when you die we bury you in water in the name of Jesus Christ Amen this is where I met him. This is where he spoke peace to my heart in these altars. Amen. Let's, let's just lift our hands right now if we will and thank him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. R&R &R is what I'm talking about today. Repentance and remission of sin. Amen. Amen. I remember, you don't know him, but brother, some of you present do. L.L. L. Blackman, Leonard Blackman, I remember. He was an elder in our church at Bonware, one of my mentors. Sister Burks here, Brother Burks' wife's daddy was a mentor of mine, Brother L, and others were my teachers. And when he was saved, he was a, a roughneck. He worked in the Gulf of Mexico, and God saved him and filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he had brought tools home over the years from the platform, you know, and just in his pocket, and he kept them in his shop. When the Lord saved him, he walked back into his shop, he told me later, and there they lay, these tools that he had taken from the job in South Louisiana. They'd get off the barges or the helicopters or whatever it was, and he'd have a pipe wrench in his pocket or whatever, and he, he sacked all of that stuff up and drove back to South Louisiana to that office and took it into their supervisor there and said, these belong to you. They're not mine. What a witness. Yeah. Amen. What a witness. I remember, you know, the Lord does, he forgives, he remits. It's buried. But I walked out of the house, there where we lived in Bonweir, right after I was saved. And I remember there was a building next door to where we lived then, and they had been repairing the roof, and there were several bundles of tar 40 pounds bundles of tar and I was repairing a roof there on our house I just walked over and took one while I was in sin and I helped repair my roof with that well after I was saved working around the house I walked around to the back porch and there was half of that sack of tar laying there that I had already used part of it and it smote me. 
I said, my God, I stole that. And here it is in my yard, and I never did pay for this. So I made arrangements, and let me tell you what, we didn't have no money. We, I mean, it was, you know, those days were tight. I got in my car, and I drove to Newton, Texas. The tar belonged to the sheriff in Newton County, <laughs> Wayne Powell. And I used his name because he's distant kinfolk. I was scared witless. Another thing, I, this morning in prayer, there was eight, 18 men in the prayer room. I never had prayed with the police in the prayer room. And there was a policeman in our prayer room. Two, Jesus Christ and then Brother Holloway. So, what, boy, things are different now. So, I walk into the courthouse and I, the lady receptionist asks me what, what I need. I tell her I need to see the sheriff. She said, sit down. And he was in his office later. The, she said, you can go in now. I opened the door and stepped in. And boy, he was surprised. Ronnie, what's, what are you doing here, boy? How's Dorsey D? How's, how's Sister Maddie? Here we go. I said, Wayne, I got something to confess this morning. I said, you know that tar you left in long story short? He said, yeah. He said, I said, well, I used it, and I'm here. And whatever, it, whatever it costs, I want to I pay for that. He reared back in, in that chair, and he looked at me, and he said, Ronnie, thank God that Jesus Christ saved you. He said, it's just one less problem that I'll have to deal with in this community. And he said, you go and whatever else you want from that place, that tar, whatever's that, you go get it and use it. It's yours. At 72 Chevrolet, on the way back to Bonner, I cried and spoke in tongues for 10 miles. I was a baby in Christ. I bawled. Amen, because of what Jesus had done for me. In high school, in high school, Sister Irvin, I'm getting close. In high school, five minutes, ten, in high school, we would leave the schoolhouse there at Newton and go at lunch, and we would go down to these stores, and there we would smoke and cuss and fight. That's what we would do, and steal. And I had stole a lot of stuff from this one store for lunch because all of my money went on tobacco, you know, honey bun and tobacco. I took what money I had, and I walked into this store, this proprietor, years later. And I said, sir, he looked at me puzzled. I, I said, I was one of those kids that used to come in this store in high school, and I said, I stole some stuff from you. He said, yeah, I had some things that went missing. He did a lot of stuff. And I had $20, and I said, I want to give this to you. And he was just baffled. He couldn't say anything. I said, I want to just get to try to pay back. I didn't have to do it, but I was smote in here. You know, God, had, it was under the blood. But I believe, but you know, from then, you know, I just was blessed. I felt good after that. Yeah. Amen. From then on, when I would confess before him and try to keep the slate clean. Amen. The Bible speaks of the contamination of defilement of the flesh and the spirit and I have trouble keeping my spirit clean old runny in here I see too much amen I get down to pray and I'm thinking about somebody or something else or some family problem and that's not God's will amen I pr should pray about it and leave it alone I remember yesterday me and my wife were in conversation and I brought something up from somewhere about someone and all of a sudden I was it checked in my spirit and I told her I said that's none of my business why am I even talking about it it's none of my business pray let's pray for it and move on amen R&R &R, repentance and remission of sin bringing this to a close here this morning my first question after my new birth experience was this I asked Brother Outlaw, my pastor then, I said, what's next, Brother Outlaw? I remember that night sitting there on that pew, and uh, 
he said, well, we'd been I'd been baptized in Jesus' name. He said, you be at church every time the doors open. If we have in church, you be here. Bring your family. He said, you pay your tithes and offering, and you be at church. Amen. And that's what I'm saying here this morning. I, I did not know what exactly to do. When I came to church the next service, I noticed the men went into the prayer room. I went into that little dark room and knelt down. I didn't know what to say, but Jesus, I knew Jesus, and I would listen. And I peeped, you know, in the dark, and there'd be men with their hands lifted, and I'd lift mine up. I remember my brother-in-law here, Larry Rackley, he's sitting here today, filled, filled with the Holy Ghost, buried in Jesus' name. He asked me one time, the first Pentecostal service he ever went to, I believe it was a funeral, he said, why do some of you people lift one hand and some of you lift two? That, that was a stranger in the house of God. He, he had never been, you know, exposed to Jesus Christ. And it was a question. I told him, well, I had my excuse. He was here, so I said, well, I, I lifted my right hand because I didn't want to bother you with my left. <laughs> I never will forget that. Amen. Amen. But here's my counsel and my advice to you today. The next, what do you do next? Submit to a pastor and embrace the church. Allow the pastor or the shepherd to speak into your life. I want to say this, I feel impressed right now. Brother, Brother Burks, Brother Darwin Burks, my son-in-law, and my daughter, Sister Burks, have been on my property before speaking to me an old minister in tears admonishing me and correcting me and saying sister burke's daddy you can't do that that's wrong with a bad spirit i had a bad spirit at times and brother burke's i remember we were putting in a water line out here at my farm where i live now in the dirt and he was helping and tears running down that shepherd's face he said brother Irvin you can't do that that's I, that's not advisable don't do that don't go there don't take that job don't move or whatever it was tears running down that shepherd's face submit to that pastor and let him speak into your life Allowing the word of God to correct, admonish, and guide your future. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Could we stand today? <laughs> Praise God. R&R. &R. Let's take some R&R, &R, if you please. If we'll repent, God will forget it. Yes, sir. He'll bear it beneath the blood. Amen. Lord Jesus. Help us today. We've brought a simple truth today. It's so basic. We want to go to heaven. I want to be saved. Help us, Lord Jesus, to make that correction. Oh, Lord, help us to submit to a pastor and to apostolic authority and help us to get into your word and be filled with your spirit. Amen. And be ready, Lord for the rapture of the church. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed, I believe, it. next.